Toll Regulatory Board approves toll increase in NLEX effective on March 20. Outgoing Budget Secretary Benjamin Jokno hopes next DBM chief is not a politician. Forbes magazine names real estate tycoon and former Senator Manny Villar as the richest man in the Philippines. My case, my history is proof in concept that HEB can be cured. And know why a test performed on a London patient offers hope of cure for HIV AIDS. Good evening. The Toll Regulatory Board or TRB has approved a toll hike on the North Luzon Expressway or NLEX beginning March 20. The board has approved the toll hike petition following various developments done on NLEX. The previous 45 pesos toll rate for Class 1 vehicles in the open system will increase to 55 pesos. Class 2 vehicle rates will increase to 137 pesos and 165 pesos for Class 3. There is also a spike in the rates of NLEX end-to-end -end system. Payments will increase to 258 pesos for Class 1, 646 pesos for Class 2, and 775 pesos for Class 3 vehicles. Consumers can still avail of the NFA rise upon the implementation of the rise tarification law. Ray Palayo tells us why. The National Food Authority or NFA Council approved on Tuesday the amended Implementing Rules and Regulations or IRR of the Rice Tarification Law. Agriculture Secretary Manny Peñol explained that based on the approved IRR, the NFA will adopt the rolling buffer stacking concept and buy local farmers yield all year round with an optimal level of buffer stocks good for 30 days. Once the optimal level is reached, the NFA will be allowed to dispose all dry stocks to prevent spoilage as milled rice cannot be kept beyond 6 months. This overrides the provision of RA 11203 that the NFA can release stocks only during emergencies because the agency will need to dispose stocks to prevent spoilage. Therefore, the current imported rice stocks will be released to grain retailers at 27 pesos per kilogram until August this year. The NFA Council will determine the price of NFA rice to be procured locally and be sold in the market to ensure that NFA does not lose its revenue. Naandyan pa yung uh, Department of Agriculture sa pagkipagtulungan ng Department of Trade and Industry at isaset pa namin yung presyo ng uh, bigas. Hindi ka pwedeng basta markabahala ka na kung anong gustong presyo yung gagawin yung, yung, mo. Yung compute, no? As of the NFA's transferred functions, the Bureau of Plant Industry or BPI will take over in the issuance of the sanitary and phytosanitary permits for rice importation. Once the IRR is signed by the Department of Budget and Management, Department of Agriculture and NEDA, several employees are expected to move from the NFA to BPI to support the implementation of its new functions. Ray Pilayo, UNTV, News and Rescue, Quezon City. Malacanang stands firm that President Duterte will not interfere with the recent conflict in Congress over the 2019 proposed national budget. Meanwhile, some railway projects are affected because of the delay in the passage of the 2019 budget. Rosalie Cos explains why. Malacanang distanced itself from the new controversy in Congress hounding the 2019 proposed national budget. Yesterday, Senator Panfilo Lacson said the bill is doomed. He also alleged that House Speaker Gloria Arroyo manipulated the ratified bicameral report with pork insertions. Presidential spokesperson Salvador Panelo said President Rodrigo Duterte will not interfere with the intramurals in Congress. The lawmakers also have to settle whatever conflict they have among themselves. Meanwhile, some railway projects of the government are somehow affected because of the delay in the passage of the 2019 national budget according to the Department of Transportation. Primarily is the MRT3 rehabilitation in which Japan Sumimoto Corporation has been paying for the supplies needed for the rehabilitation and maintenance of the trains and railroads from its own pocket. The Metro Manila subway and the North-South commuter railway projects are also affected by the non-passage of the national budget. Lahat po nung may panggagalingang pondo for the first time 
sa GA 2019 na ito a certain extent po merong effect. So, hali- Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. Outgoing Budget Secretary Benjamin Jocno hopes the next Budget Secretary is not a politician. Rosa Licoz is back to tell us why. In his last press conference as the Budget Secretary this morning, New Banco Central ng Pilipinas or BSP Governor Benjamin Jocno expressed his hopes that President Rodrigo Duterte would not appoint a politician for the budget chief position. This because a politician might have a political agenda in the budget department, Jocno said. The budget is a way of, you know, uh, doing popularity or... Uh, some politicians, etc. So, yun naman talaga ang role ng DB. Kasi if you are a politician, parang iba yung agenda mo ngayon. Uh, the official also said a technocrat or an expert must be appointed in the said position. He refused, however, to comment on reports that House Speaker Gloria Arroyo will be appointed a new budget secretary. So there are many names being floated, but I hope the next DBM secretary is not a politician. Not a politician. Not a politician. As Jokno becomes the new BSP governor, budget undersecretary Janet Abuel has been designated as the DBM officer in charge. Tonight, Jokno will take his oath for his new position. He formally assumes the post tomorrow and is expected to conduct his first monetary policy meeting. Jokno said he vows to continue the reform initiatives of former BSP governor, the late Nestor Espinilla, such as financial inclusion and cybersecurity. He also answered those who questioned his appointment as the new BSP governor. Central Bank governor, you just have you have to have the necessary tools to analyze what is presented to you. I have a PhD in economics, so I know exactly what's going on. With, whether I'm here or in there, I, I know that. Okay, I have something that is Secretary Dominguez. I have three masters, master's degree, one in public administration, two in economic, one in economics, political economy. I have the necessary training. The appointment of a new budget secretary depends on President Duterte's prerogative. But the palace said competence, integrity, and expertise are the qualities being considered for the position. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. 17 Filipinos made it to Forbes' latest list of the world's richest, with real estate tycoons posting gains amid declines for most others. Here's Scott Dumaraos to tell us why. Real estate tycoon Manuel Manivillar is now the Philippines' richest, according to Forbes magazine's 2019 ranking of the world's wealthiest. Villar, 69, managed to grow his net worth to $5.5 billion as of March 5 this year, from $3 billion in the same month in 2018 through his real estate business, placing him at the 317th spot in Forbes' Billionaire Club. The Philippines' richest list was previously dominated by Henry C. Sr., who was the country's wealthiest man for 11 years in a row. The retail tycoon passed away last January 19 at the age of 94. In the second spot is 92-year-old JG Summit founder John Gokongwe, whose real-time net worth dropped to $5.2 billion from $5.8 billion a year ago. Next to Gokongwe is sports and gaming magnate Enrique Razon Jr., whose fortune hit $4.8 billion as of this month from $4.9 billion last year, and the list goes on. Based on Forbes' latest count, there are 2,153 billionaires on the 2019 list, down from 2,208 in 2018. The total combined net worth of this year's billionaires is $8.7 trillion, down from $9.1 trillion in 2018. Well, I definitely think that we are in a bad moment for the very rich. For the first time, I, I've been tracking the uh, wealthiest for way too long. And, and really, for the first time this year, we've seen a real animosity. There's always been kind of a voyeuristic mentality and uh, people joking, oh, if I only had a billion, I'd be on the list. Um, but you see a, a vehemence against these people um, because of the wealth and quality that we see in the world. Amazon founder Jeff Bezos took the top spot in Forbes World's Billionaires even as his net worth fell to $131 billion as of this month from $160 billion in October 2018. 
Completing the top five richest are Bill Gates, Warren Buffett, Bernard Arnold, Carlos Slim Halu, and the list goes on. U.S. President Donald Trump's net worth was unchanged from a year ago at $3.1 billion, but he climbed in the ranks to number 715 from 766 in 2018. The youngest billionaire in the list is Kylie Jenner at 21 years old. She made it to the 2019 Forbes Billionaires list for the first time with an estimated fortune of $1 billion. Cited as the youngest self-made billionaire of all time, Jenner owns 100% of Kylie Cosmetics, the three-year-old beauty business that did an estimate $360 million in sales last year. Kat Dumaraos, UNTV News and Rescue. A London HIV patient becomes the second person to be cured from AIDS. Experts say the case is a proof that scientists will one day be able to find a cure and end AIDS. This report explains why. An HIV positive man in Britain has become the second known adult worldwide to be clear of the AIDS virus after he received a bone marrow transplant from an HIV resistant donor. Almost three years after he received bone marrow stem cells from a donor with a rare genetic mutation that resists HIV infection, and more than 18 months after he came off antiretroviral drugs, highly sensitive tests still show no trace of the man's previous HIV infection. AIDS experts said the case is a proof of the concept that scientists will one day be able to end AIDS and marks a critical moment in the search for an HIV cure. However, this does not mean that a cure has already been found. The significance is that it, it's been 10 years since the first one was reported um, without any cases in between. And uh, therefore, there are a number of questions that were asked as to um, uh, what was special about the first case. Was it uh, a patient factor that was not repeatable? Um, or was it something about the regimen? Or was it the radiation that he had? Um, uh, and also, so could it be repeated? I think it's important to have, to have repeated it, potentially. The man is being called the London patient because his case is similar to the first known case. The first cured AIDS patient is American Timothy Brown, who became known as the Berlin patient when he underwent a similar treatment in Germany in 2007. HIV expert says Brown is still HIV-free. My case, my history is proof and concept that HIV can be cured. Hope is alive and cure is on the horizon. It is my hope that life and and story, my life and story will inspire others to follow the same path. Some 37 million people worldwide are currently infected with HIV and the AIDS pandemic has killed about 35 million people worldwide since it began in the 1980s. Scientific research into the complex virus has in recent years led to the development of drug combinations that can keep it at bay in most patients. Rina Valimar Camara, UNTV News and Rescue. Up next on Y News. Eastern Police District Director and Pasay Police Chief relieved from post following the arrest of a cop over extortion racket. And as Sambuanga City and 12 towns in North Cotabato now under a state of calamity due to dry spell. Thank you for keeping me company in the first part of Wine News. More recent behind the stories with Angelo Castro the third after this quick break. I'm Rina Villamor Camara. Good evening. Welcome back to Wine News. We pick up from where Rina Villamor Camara left off. I'm Angelo Diego Castro III, and here are the headlines. Sana po, sino lang po yung nagkasala, sila lang po dapat yung maparusahan. Tsaka huwag niyo po sana naman tanggalin yung prebeneheyo na mawalan po ng dalaw dito. Believe it, inmate families appeal to authorities after the suspension of visitation rights of NBP prisoners. A maritime law expert calls on the government to increase vigilance on Pag-asa Island following Chinese vessels' alleged harassment incident against local fishermen. Zamboanga City and 12 other towns in North Cotabato 
declare state of calamity due to dry spell. And car makers unveil newest electric models in 2019 Geneva Motor, Motor Show. The director of the Eastern Police District or EPD and the chief of the Pasay City Police Station were relieved from their posts after some of their anti-drug drug officers were arrested for cases of robbery, extortion, and kidnap for ransom. Lea Ilagan will tell us why. You have uh, until today to surrender or else bahala ng Diyos inyo. PNP Counterintelligence Task Force Commander Colonel Romeo Karamat gave a one-day ultimatum against three Pasay cops allegedly involved in extortion activities from an alleged drug suspect. The victim narrated how he was accosted and arrested by three police officers while he was walking on a street in Makati. Bigla pong may sumalubong sa akin tatlong armadong lalaki at bigla po akong inakbay ng isang lalaki at sinabi pong huwag po akong gagalaw at pulis po sila. Hanggang sa pinasasan na po ako, hanggang sa sinakay na po ako sa isang motor, hanggang din, dinala po ako sa isang presinto, dun po sa opisin ng DEU. At the present, he said he was told to call his relatives and ask them to bring 100,000 pesos in exchange for his liberty. Ang sabi niya sa akin, hawak daw siya ng DSAU, uh, DSAU ng oh, na Pasay Police. Tapos nangihingi ng pera na halagang 100,000 pesos. So sabi niya, gagawin daw na paraan bago mag-umaga ang pera. One of the suspects, Police Corporal Anwar Nasser, denied his participation in the arrest of the victim. Wala pa akong knowledge din sa sinasabi. May mga taong na-arresto rin po doon na nasabi rin nakakarating ko lang din po. The PNP CITF commander said, Nasser and three other policemen named Police Lieutenant Ronaldo Frades, the chief of Pasay Police Station 1 Drug Enforcement Unit, Patrolman Anthony Fernandez and Staff Sergeant Rigor Octaviano will be facing kidna for ransom charges. NCRPO Director Major General Guillermo Eliazar, meanwhile, confronted Nasser while inside the CITF detention cell. Eliazar also relieved the chief of police of Pasay Police Station Colonel Noel Flores and 27 members of his personnel after the incident. So the commanders in all levels must do everything that he can to see to it na mabantayan itong mga drug enforcement unit personnel natin para hindi na abusuhin. Flores will be replaced by Police Colonel Bernard Jung, the chief of the NCRPO Regional Operations Sentlands Division. Meanwhile, NCRPO Chief LSR has fired 15 cops from the Eastern Police District over allegations of involvement in a robbery extortion incident. A complaint has been filed against PO2 Marlo Kibete for allegedly extorting money from a drug suspect that his group arrested in a buy bust operation in Marikina City Monday night, March 4. Kibete and his men were reported to have taken 60,000 pesos cash and a necklace from the suspect and his live-in partner. The cops are also accused of forcing the two to sign a deed of sale for a motorcycle. The said report prompted the authorities to conduct an entrapment operation against the group on Tuesday night that led to the arrest of Kibete. The 15 cops will be facing administrative and robbery extortion charges. Leia Ilagan, UNTV. News and rescue come cramming. The relatives of several inmates in the New Believed Prison are saddened by the news that privileges of inmates in NBP have been cancelled. Aiko Miguel will tell us why. Bureau of Correction or BOC Director Nicanor Fe Aldon cancelled yesterday the visiting privileges of inmates in the New Believed Prison and its six other operating units nationwide. This as authorities continue to discover contrabands such as illegal drugs in penal institutions. Just last week, an NBP inmate was discovered to have been supplying illegal drugs to his girlfriend in Cebu using internet, which is prohibited inside the prison. The Bucor chief shared they have had a partnership with gang leaders inside the NBP three months ago to stop the entry of contrabands in exchange for privileges of inmates. And then last Thursday, marami kami nakuha kasi dalawang quadrant yung aming in-inspect. So medyo hindi reflective yung sincerity ng partnership. 
That's why kahapon, kinansel natin yung, yung privilege nila nationwide. Cancelled privileges include visit, food delivery, and overnight stay of relatives inside the prison facility. Dati ang visitation hour hanggang 3 o'clock lang. Sinagad natin sa 5 o'clock. Dati wala silang overnight. Napa-overnight natin tuwing Pasko, bagong taon, February 14, overnight yung mga asawa. And then so many other privileges na in natin. So partnership, eh, mukhang uh, hindi naman sila naging seryoso masyado doon sa pag-control nila ng sarili nila. So ito yung naging epekto. Wives of several inmates, however, complain that they are not anymore allowed to visit their husbands who are behind bars. Sana po, on sino lang po yung nagkasala, sila lang po dapat yung maparusahan. Tsaka huwag niyo po sana naman tanggalin yung prebeleheyo na mawalan po ng dalaw. Dahil mahirap po para sa amin. Nakakalungkot yun eh, dahil marami po kaming mga dalaw na naantala ngayon eh. Sana hindi kami dadamay. Kasi ang dami-dami kasi namin, nakakaawa rin kami, lalo rin nakakaawa ang mga asawa namin sa loob. Sa isang linggo, dalawang bisis nga lang kami makakadalaw, nawawalan pa kami ngayon. Fueldon said the cancellation of privileges may be extended depending on how inmates cooperate. Just to, to, be, ano, to be firm with our agreement, we have to be in control of these facilities. Hindi naman pwedeng sila masusunod. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. Senatorial candidates from Hugpong ng Pagbabago, Ocho Derecho, and PDP Laban continue, to continue campaigning two months before election period ends. Grace Kasin will tell us why. The Ocho Derecho candidates or the opposition powerhouse Senate Slate campaigned in a public market in Antipolo City today. Present were Attorney Romulo Macalintal and former Congressman Erin Tanyada. They also met with their Liberal Party colleagues in Rizal. The opposition party insists to conduct a debate with the administration's party. This despite the COMLEC statement that there is not enough time to do it. The core function of the COMLEC is not simply to conduct elections, but more important to ensure that the voters are educated when they go to the polling places. During the PDP Laban's campaign in Abra yesterday, Party President Senator Coco Pimentel III said they are willing to coordinate with the Ocho Derecho on the said talk. Even Hugpong ng Pagbabago Chairperson Sara Duterte expressed willingness to join the discourse. Earlier today, Hugpong ng Pagbabago Senatorial Candidates went to Paranaque. Senators Sani Agara, Coco Pimentel, former MMDA Chairman Francis Tolentino, former Bucor Chief Ronald Bato de la Rosa, former Assistant to the President Bongo, former Media Man Jiggy Manikad, and Davao City Mayor Sara Duterte Carpio were present. Hugpong ng Pagbabago has no scheduled campaign rally tomorrow, while Ocho Derecho will head for General Santos and Davao City. Grace Kasin, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. A mar <clears throat> maritime law expert calls on the government for an increased vigilance on Pagasa Island amid the maritime dispute issue. Government troops must also not be intimidated by the presence of Chinese vessels near the, near the island. Nel Maribohok explains why. The continuous presence of the Chinese vessels in some parts of the West Philippine Sea is just a part of their tactics to intimidate the Philippine government troops in the area. It has been reported that some Chinese vessels had been allegedly harassing local fishermen in the Sandy Cay, a group of sandbars between Pagasa Island and the Subi Reef where a Chinese artificial island is located. In a way, it's not new, but uh, what makes it uh, important is that it is clearly being employed to uh, to monitor and to maybe make it difficult for the Philippines to carry out its repair works on the island. According to Jay Batong Bakal, Director of the Institute for Maritime Affairs and Law of the Sea, the latest reported harassment incident of Chinese vessels on Filipino fishermen is a call to the government for increased vigilance in guarding Philippine territories and parts of the country's exclusive economic zone. Uh, I guess the best response would simply be increased vigilance and for our people to continue doing what they're doing. It can be noted that Malacanang has expressed its intent to verify the said latest harassment incident to the Department of National Defense. 
For defense analyst Jose Antonio Custodio, the government should step in in guarding Filipino fishermen in the area. Engage natin yung Coast Guard natin to protect our fishermen in those areas. On the other hand, for Batong Bakal, the Philippine government should always consider the filing of protest against China every time a harassment incident happens in the region. This is despite the current administration's policy of being cautious in dealing with China. Protest is necessary, uh, even a quiet one, no? just to make sure that uh, we will never be seen as having uh, acquiesced or having accepted uh, this situation. Nel Maribuho, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. 12 towns in North Cotabato are now under a state of calamity. Local disaster officials have laid out measures to address the situation in the province. Nina Armilio will tell us why. The City Council approved a resolution placing Sambonga City under a state of calamity due to a dry spell caused by a weak El Nino phenomenon. City Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Office Chief Dr. Elmer Apolinario said the resolution was based on their recommendation after drought affected crops irrigation for rice fields and water supply in the city. So we are now under a state of calamity by reason of the isa yung ano yung advisory ng ano ng ng GOST pag-asa ng weak El Nino and of course yung fact on the ground na uh, there is a uh, water resources problem sa city of Sambanga. Mm-hmm. Of course are uh, affected by ano, yung agriculture sector in some other sectors. The Zamboanga City Water District has recently implemented water rationing operations after its daily production declined by 50% from 158 million liters to 80 million liters. The local agriculturist office, meanwhile, reported that a total of 600 hectares of rice fields have been hit by the dry spell. With a state of calamity declaration, government agencies can now use the calamity fund to implement mitigating measures, such as cloud seeding operations and leasing of tanks for water distribution, and to procure alternative crops and drilling rigs for affected sectors. The Zamboanga CDRMO said 13 million pesos has been allotted for cloud seeding operations, while the city agriculturist office has 20 million pesos to aid drought-affected farmers. Uh, looking at ways forward, how to help out what they're doing in terms of distribution of too big, in terms of finding other sources, in, te- in terms of uh, having uh, yung mga drilling rigs or drilling machines, and then meron tayong ano, yung, ano, yung alternative crops, vegetables, na pwede ipabigay sa mga, ano, sa mga farmers. Meanwhile, 12 towns in North Cotabato have also been placed under state of calamity due to the prevailing heat. According to the Provincial Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Council, the affected towns are Carmen, Piquit, Aljosan, Midsayap, Matalam, Malang, Alamada, Tulunan, Kabakan, Libungan, and Pigkawayan. Local disaster officials have already recommended to the provincial board level the inducement of artificial rain through cloud seeding, as well as the procurement of water pumps and other assistance to farmers to save their remaining crops. Nina Armilio, UNTV News and Rescue. The Civil Service Commission warns all government employees of possible suspension or termination if found playing online games during work hours in a government office. Joan Nano tells us why. The Civil Service Commission or CSC reminds all government employees anew not to spend their official hours at work for their side jobs and leisure activities. The CSC has made a statement after Naval Biliran Mayor Gerard Espinas issued an order that all his employees caught playing Mobile Legends will be subject to termination. CSC Commissioner Attorney Aileen Dezada explains that it is strictly prohibited for government employees to play online games, use social media, watch television and the likes during work hours. Ang iba, nagmamanicure, pedicure, di ba po? Meron nagbebenta rin ng mga ibang mga items and uh, using official time, using government resources. So ito yung ayaw nating um, mangyari sa gobyerno because tandaan nila we are being paid by the taxpayers. Public office is a public trust. Under the rules and administrative cases in the civil service, government employees found with these violations will be sanctioned with six months to one year suspension for the first offense, with possible dismissal imposed for repeated violations. 
the CSC has their contact center ng bayan where the public can report complaints on slow action or inaction of any government agencies in rendering their service. The call center ng bayan receives around 400 complaints every day, including reports on government employees who do not render their services accordingly. As they receive such complaints, the CSC immediately coordinates with the concerned agencies, which are then given three days to address the issues raised. Immediately within the day, ita transmit na yon to the agency, dun sa pinunong ng ahensya at meron tayong network of bilis action partners. So bawat ahensya, bawat bureau, merong bilis action partner na ma alert. Hindi namin bibitawan yung complaint hanggat hindi ito na resolve. The public may reach the call center ng bayan through its hotline number 16565 or 0908 -881 -6565. The Civil Service Commission also advises the public not to hesitate to report their complaints against those government agencies who fail to provide actions on their needs. John Nano, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. The car industry is undergoing a radical transformation, with most car makers agreeing the next 10 years will bring more change than the two previous decades. With this, car makers continue to introduce hybrid and electric vehicles. Zovic Bermas explains why. Electric autos took center stage on Tuesday at the 2019 Geneva Motor Show in Switzerland. From luxury cars like Aston Martin's Lagonda and Thomas Ingenlatt's Polestar to mass producer BMW, many car makers now offer electric models. Securing the electric market has become increasingly important for car makers as demand for traditional combustion engine vehicles slows in China and Europe, partly due to tariffs stemming from Washington's trade war with Beijing. You living in your home, um, charging overnight, I think you will experience that actually having a fully charged car every morning is a very enjoyable way, not having to go to the petrol station. Some car producers urge governments and administrations to provide better infrastructure for electric cars. We also call upon uh, um, governments, local governments, uh, EU uh, at large, not to only put standards in, but also help in developing the infrastructure that is necessary to meet those standards. So at BMW, we certainly also take our um, responsibility there. So with our Charge Now facilities, we have invested a lot in charging uh, capabilities. Based on a report from JP Morgan Research Team, the growth in electric vehicles and hybrid electric vehicles is climbing. And by 2025, EVs and HEVs will account for an estimated 30% of all vehicle sales. The Geneva International Motor Show runs from March 7 to 17. Jovic Burmas, UNTV News and Rescue. Up next on Y News. UK police link small bombs sent to London airports and rail hub. An Australian operation invites volunteers to snorkel a scar Sydney harbor for plastic. And learn about cheap but safe gadgets to be used during brownouts. Y News will be right back after this quick break. To complete the most significant news for this day, Y News continue. Here are the top stories. The Toll Regulatory Board or TRB has approved the toll hike on the North Luzon Expressway or NLEX beginning March 20. The board has approved the toll hike petition following various developments done on NLEX. The previous 45 pesos toll rate for Class 1 vehicles in the open system will increase to 55 pesos. Class 2 vehicle rates will increase to 137 pesos and 165 pesos for Class 3. There is also a spike in the rates of NLEX end-to-end -end system. Payments will increase to 258 pesos for Class 1, 646 pesos for Class 2, and 775 pesos for Class 3 vehicles. Former Budget Secretary Benjamin Diokno takes his oath before President Rodrigo Duterte tonight in Malacanang. 
Yokno replaces Nestor Espinilla Jr., who passed away on February 23. During his last press conference in the Budget Department this morning, Yokno expressed that he hopes for President Rodrigo Duterte to appoint a personality outside politics as the next budget chief. popularity or some politicians, etc. So, you know, man, talagang role ng DB. Because if you are a politician, parang iba yung agenda mo na yun. As Jokno becomes the new BSP governor, Budget Undersecretary Janet Abuel has been designated as the DBM officer in charge. Visiting privileges of inmates nationwide, including their recreational activities, have been cancelled by the Bureau of Corrections Chief Nicanor Faildon, effective Tuesday, March 5. This was after a prisoner was discovered making drug transactions through Wi-Fi connections inside the new Bilibid prisons in Muntinlupa. Visitation hour hanggang 3 o'clock lang. Sinagad natin sa 5 o'clock. Dati wala silang overnight. Napa-overnight natin tuwing Pasko, bagong taon, February 14, overnight yung mga asawa. And then so many other privileges na in-extend natin. So partnership. Eh, mukhang uh, hindi naman sila naging seryoso masyado doon sa pag-control nila ng sanilin. So ito yung naging epekto. File Don said the cancellation of privileges may be extended depending on how inmates cooperate. Just to, to, be, ano, to be firm with our agreement, we have to be in control of these facilities. Hindi naman pwedeng sila masusunod. Malaysian Prime Minister Mahathir bin Mohamad arrives today in the Philippines for an official visit until tomorrow March 7. Malacanang said Mahathir's arrival aims to reciprocate President Rodrigo Duterte's visit to Malaysia last year. Prime Minister Mahathir is set to attend a business forum tomorrow morning in Makati City. The, le the leaderships of both houses of the Philippine Congress are expected to pay a courtesy call to the Malaysian chief executive. Afterwards, the Prime Minister will proceed to Rizal Park to lead a wreath-laying ceremony. Around 3 p.m. tomorrow, President Duterte will welcome Prime Minister Mahathir's delegation to Malacanang Palace. The two leaders will then have a bilateral meeting to enhance the ties of the two countries on political and economical aspects, as well as people-to-people -people exchanges. Presidential spokesperson Salvador Panelas said the issue on Sabah may also be discussed. Sabah is among the territories being claimed and wanted to be recovered by the Philippines from Malaysia. The dry season is here when brownouts are more frequent. Here are some items you can buy to save money as well as avoid fire. Monoxon has this report. Do you still use candles during brownout? Think again, because according to the Bureau of Fire Protection, candles are among the top eight causes of fire in houses other than faulty electrical connections and cigarette butts. However, there are many alternatives to candles, and this can be bought at lower prices. In Divisoria, Manila, there are plenty of stores that offer a lot of money-saving items with amazing functions. There are light bulbs and many other kinds of lighting fixtures which are safe to use in case of brownouts. One of them is this rechargeable bulb which automatically lights up when there is no power supply indoors. It is sold at 250 pesos. The solar-powered torch and flashlight does not need to be plugged. It gets energy to function from sunlight. It costs 150 pesos. This sensor LED light can be installed in dark alleys. It automatically turns on and gives off light when it detects darkness. A rechargeable headlight costs 150 pesos, while the large and bright ones cost 300 pesos. This 400 peso fan blade produces bright light and is energy saving. The prices of the various kinds of lighting sources, such as light emitting diode or LED, and compact fluorescent light or CFL light bulbs are from 40 pesos to 250 pesos. Meanwhile, the Manila Electric Company or Meralco has some pieces of advice to consumers. Set the temperature of an air conditioning unit to 25 degrees to feel comfortable enough.
Do not overload a refrigerator as this can affect a household's electric consumption. Use LED instead of electric light bulbs to save about 600 pesos a month. However, Miralco warns not to patronize power savers as they could increase a household's monthly electric bills. Wala kaming nakita ng evidence of savings sa lahat po ng mga produktong nakita namin na tinatawag na energy saving device or power saver devices. No? So kumbaga parang magsasayang lang po tayo ng, ano, ng, ng gastos dito. Uh, medyo may kamahalan din siya. No? Basta mahigit libo siya, no? libo ang cost niya. Do not be fooled by stores or individuals that sell stickers which allegedly save you electricity when used on electronic appliances. Five stickers cost 1,500 pesos. This dry season, be a wise consumer to save and avoid the dangers of fire. Mon Hokson, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. The Philippines has been using skin grafting to treat burn, a burnt part of the body. But let us know the first aid tips on how to prevent infection on a burnt body part. Aiko Miguel filed this report. For a burned or flayed part of the skin, there are appropriate first aid measures to be followed. According to Department of Health or DOH, first or second degree burns are manageable through first aid to prevent infection. Any patient must not just rely on treating burns using home remedies. Is it safe to apply ointments, cream, or toothpaste on a burnt part of the skin as how others treat burn? Sa ngayon, hindi naman na natin ina-advise yun. No? Yung mga naglalagay, o kaya lalagyan ng gatas or ng cream or mayonnaise, di ba? Lalagyan nila o kaya ng mga toothpaste. Ang importante lang, matanggal yung init na mapababa yung temperature. So tubig na malinis na lamang ang gamitin. Meanwhile, according to UNTV Rescue, first aid must be administered properly. The first thing to do is remove the person affected from the source of heat to cool down the body part burned. Pagka ang balat ay nalapnos, uh, tatapat pa rin natin siya sa running water hanggang sa mawala yung init. Tapos kukuha tayo o gagamit tayo ng sterile na gasa or kung wala tayo neto, pwede tayong gumamit ng malinis na tela. And then uh, medyo babasain natin ng konti yung tela at saka natin itatakip doon sa Napaso na parte. If there is no clean water, hydrogel can be used and directly applied on the burned area. Clean wrap should also be used to cover the gauze used to protect the burned body part. After applying first aid, the patient should be brought to a hospital for proper medical attention. The DOH advises that in case of a third degree burn, a medical procedure should be done to help the skin regenerate. With the advent of modern technology, advanced medical procedures have been available to treat burn. In the Philippines, skin grafting has been practiced like amnion and autograph through which skin is placed on a burned part of the body. Gumagamit tayo ng bawa ng mga amnion graft, yung galing sa yung bahay bata, no? yung pagpinanganak yung baby. So nilalagay yan para din tumulay din yung mga skin cells at saka ma-cover yung mga defect. Halimbawa, braso lang naman yung nasunog sa iyo. Then maaring kumuha ng balat sa hita mo, tapos yun ang ipapatong doon sa kiblang part ng katawan mo na walang skin. So merong autograph. The DOH said many other experimental materials are used in various countries, but only a few of them are being used in the Philippines. Tilapia skin, which has been reportedly used in Brazil for skin regeneration, is not yet used in the Philippines. Nanofiber technology spray is also used in other countries to heal burned skin faster. But the DOH said such technology is not yet available in the Philippines. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. And for the news abroad, here's Stephanie C. live from Hong Kong. Stephanie, good evening. Good evening, Diego. New satellite images of North Korea suggest it is restoring a rocket, a rocket launch site it had pledged to dismantle, say, analysts. The images were taken two days after talks between the leaders of the U.S. and North Korea ended without them reaching a deal on denuclearization. The Tongchang Ri site has been used for satellite launches and engine testing, never for ballistic missile launches. Meanwhile, the U.S. has warned North Korea could face yet more sanctions should Pyongyang not take steps to denuclearize. 
Hillary Clinton has ruled out a third U.S. presidential run in 2020. As the Democratic candidate in 2016, Clinton was widely expected to become the first female U.S. president before a shock defeat by U.S. President Donald Trump. Asked if she would run again for any public office in future, she said she doesn't think so. Meanwhile, former New York Mayor Michael Bloomberg ruled himself out of the 2020 race. A U.S. Marine veteran and fellow volunteers help a Navy veteran whose house was devastated after the violent storms last weekend. Beverly Saison tells us why. 59-year-old U.S. Marine Glenn Stover jumped in his car and drove 850 miles from his home in York, Pennsylvania to rural southeast Alabama. Stover said he felt honored to volunteer his time to help a fellow veteran whose house and property was badly damaged by the series of tornadoes spawned from Sunday's March 3rd violent storms. On Tuesday, March 5th, he and his team, the Samaritan's Purse volunteers, cut trees from the house of 60-year-old Navy Seabees veteran Eugene Stanfill. Stanfill said he was grateful for the help of the crew that did for him. All the orange shirts have done something that was I couldn't imagine could be done in a day. They've cleaned up a tornado in my front yard. They've been a, a more, than, more than I could. I never expected them to do this much in that much time. I didn't think it could be done. For the following days and weeks, Stover will work with Samaritan's Purse that goes door to door in disaster zones, asking people if they can send a crew to help them recover. Uh, just be able to share God's love with anyone is a privilege and an honor. Uh, but when there are veterans involved, like this gentleman who's a veteran and his brother-in-law is a disabled combat, uh, a disabled veteran, and well, uh, I just don't want to be anywhere else right now but here helping these people. Samaritan's Purse mobilizes staff and equipment and enlists thousands of volunteers to provide emergency aid to victims of tornadoes, hurricanes, and other natural disasters in the United States. Beverly Saison, UNTV News and Rescue, USA. A teenager from Ohio defied his parents to get vaccinated. Meanwhile, three improvised explosives were found at three major transit hubs in London. Joe Bickbermas will tell us why. In the United Kingdom, London's counter-terrorism police said they had launched an investigation into who mailed three small bombs to two airports and a major rail station on Tuesday. No one was injured by the devices, one of which caused a small fire in an office building at Heathrow Airport. The Metropolitan Police received the first report of a suspicious device at Heathrow at 9.55 GMT after staff opened a package which caught fire. Later, a similar package was identified in the postroom of London's busiest rail station Waterloo and a third was found in an office at London City Airport in East London. Flights were unaffected, though a light rail line linking London City with central London was temporarily suspended. In USA, more than 80 people were arrested in Sacramento, California on Monday night as people continued to protest a ruling that no charges would be filed against the officers responsible for the shooting death of Stephen Clark. The Sacramento County District Attorney Anne Marie Schubert announced Saturday that while she considers Clark's death a tragedy for his family and community, the killing could not be considered a crime by her office. Protests have mounted every night since the announcement. Clark, a father of two, was gunned down in the backyard of his grandparents' house by police responding to a report that someone was breaking windows. Police said the officers who shot at Clark 20 times feared he was holding a firearm, but that he was later found to have been holding a cell phone. You, Meanwhile, Ethan Linderberger, 18 who defied his anti-vaccine mother by getting all his shots, testified on Capitol Hill on Tuesday that anti-vaccine groups that push their agenda online are a primary source of concern for spreading misinformation. 
Lyndon Berger, an 18-year-old high school senior from Ohio, told lawmakers he researched scientific journals, the Centers for Disease Control websites, the World Health Organization, and spoke to his physician to gain information on vaccinations before making the decision to defy his mother. He said his mother largely obtained information to withhold vaccines from her children from social media websites. Jovic Burmas, UNTV News and Rescue. And those are the news from the other parts of the globe. Back to you, Diego. Thank you, Stephanie C. Live from Hong Kong. A group of about 50 people from Operation Straw went out for a gentle morning snorkel in Sydney's world-famous harbor. Here's why from Nina Bascon. Sydney Harbour is considered as one of the most beautiful natural harbours in the world. But it is a surprise to discover that beneath its sparkling water are plastics, trash and lots of straws. Last weekend, Operation Straws group of strugglers used their snorkels to struggle a couple of hundred straws, plastic bags, fishing lines, glass bottles and more at the Sydney Harbour. Operation Straw was founded by resident Harriet Spark at the end of 2017. Based on studies, Australians use 2.9 billion straws a year. Spark was inspired to begin the project which aims to eliminate plastic straws from the ocean around Sydney. I think it's because it's such a feel-good activity to be able to get in and do something about the problems facing the world. There's so much doom and gloom out there um, for good reason. But when a community can come together and actually take action, um, it's really powerful. In the summer of 2018, the strugglers collected over 2,500 straws from Manly Cove. Spark and the Struckling volunteers, in collaboration with other organizations, persuaded more than 40 businesses in the local Manly area to stop using plastic straws. We believe in living in harmony with the environment and being proactive and responsible is, is important for us. It shows that you can make a difference by implementing change. Nina Bascon, UNTV News and Rescue, Australia. And those are the reasons behind the news. March 6, 2019. On behalf of Rina Villamor Camara, I'm Angelo Castro III. Because we need to know, we will always ask why. Good evening. <laughs>